Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Tuesday, April the 19th, 2022. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here to go over both the NBA DFS slate and the NBA prize picks selections. This is going to be a good day, three intense games, one with a massive total, definitely a lot to unpack here. And the cool thing is, for all of you that follow narratives out there, we always love to get on this birthday narrative when we're uh, looking at some of these NBA guys. Well, guess what? The birthday narrative is on me. So this is the day. You can't lose on your birthday. So let's just lock these suckers in, get them down, get, them wi- get some winners. Nothing better than posting birthday winning takedowns. So that's the plan today. Let's get it done. And uh, we're going to start right off here. A couple of things real quickly. If you want to join us, come and check us out, dfscoachtalk.com. You can sign up for as little as a three-day pass for 10 bucks. You get everything that we have to offer. If you sign up today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get all of our NBA, all of our MLB, and there's like a million games in the MLB today. And then we, you get our PGA on Thursday for the tournament uh, coming up this week. When you join Coach Talk, you get everything we have all encompassed in one, and so we'd love to have you join us. This podcast, by the way, is presented by Prize Picks. If you go to prizepicks.com, and I don't know why you haven't yet, unless you're in a state that you can't play it, but I've talked to some higher ups at Prize Picks, and they are working very hard to open up more states. But if you do go to prizepicks.com and you are making your first deposit, if you use the promo code Coach Talk, all one word, no space, they will match you dollar for dollar on that first deposit all the way up to 100 bucks, and nothing like 100 free bucks uh, to get you going for sure. So please take advantage of that. All right, three games, and again, a huge disparity in totals here. Let's talk about that first. The first game is Atlanta, Miami. Their total is 219, which is the lower total. The last game, the Pels and Suns, pretty similar, 221 and a half. But the aberration here that we have is Memphis hosting Minnesota. How about 240 and a half? So are we all mostly in the industry going to be stacking the Minnesota-Memphis game? Yes, we will. But that doesn't mean that it's just going to be Chalk City all over the place. There are so many different options in this Minnesota-Memphis game. You know, when you got studs like Jaw and uh, and all his running mates, Bain and Brooks and Jackson and Adams, and then you have the three studs and Russell, Edwards, and Towns and some good, per, uh, you know, backups as well, there's still a lot of combinations. And then choosing the one-offs from Atlanta, Miami, New Orleans, and Phoenix will also be key. But – yeah, just going in, just plan on, you know, having a, a heavy dose of Minnesota, Memphis. It should be by far the highest scoring game with a, by far the most DFS points available. Okay, let's break down as we normally do. Game one is the Atlanta Hawks at the Miami Heat. It's a 730 game. So we do start 30 minutes later. I love that 30 minutes. Um, it is Miami by seven. 219 total, 106 implied for Atlanta, 113 for the Miami Heat. Uh, Coming into this game from an injury standpoint, Bogdanovich now listed as probable, so we believe he will suit up, which is definitely improvement from when he's been listed questionable. Last game questionable, he played this game probable. I've got him in. Uh, We know that the two key guys, especially the starting center, are out for Atlanta. Capella out, Lou Williams out also. Miami, who has a tendency to place a ton of guys on the um, questionable tag, which I know is probably a strategy used by Spolstra and Riley, and those guys trying to keep the other team off their, uh, you know, preparation. But I'm sure some of these guys are dinged a little. But uh, first of all, we'll say Gabe Vincent probable. So that's nice to know that he's more than likely going to get some rotation uh, backing up at guard. But here are the questionable guys, and it is pretty massively important. 
Bam Adebayo. I cannot see him sitting, but he's listed as questionable. His backup, Dwayne Dedman, and then you have uh, P.J. Tucker as well. And he was listed questionable and played last time. So my gut tells me these guys are playing in my initial uh, walkthrough of these games. I have them all in. But certainly we'll have that news plenty before lock with it being the first game. So it's not doesn't need to be stressful. Um, Highsmith and Morris are also questionable for, for Miami, but I don't believe they'll be in the rotation anyway. A couple of things here from the, the game set. You've got uh, Atlanta, the 19th pace, and Miami, 29th, second slowest in the league. So not a ton of pace to run after here. We do have a weak defense from Atlanta, though, at 26th. And Miami, we know, has been solid defensively throughout the season. They are fifth. So a couple of things we need to talk about here. There's still some value plays. Uh, we went to Kyle Lowry last time at 6-3 and Max Struess at 4-1. Those guys are going to be two popular uh, pay down guys again. Uh, Bam out of bios all the way down to seven six. I'm sure the questionable tag will scare a lot of people. It does not scare me. Bam is definitely on my radar. Uh, you've got uh, Jimmy Butler at eight four, which certainly is is uh, within reason that pricing. You know he can take over a game at times, um, but don't know if I'm going to go up to that price. Got a lot of guys here to buy up to. But uh, here off the bench at 6'6", has some interest for me, along with Lowry and Struess and Adebayo. So that's the group that I'm looking at for Miami. Pluck one or two of those guys out based on uh, some additional information we'll be grabbing throughout the day to see if there's any lineup changes or any matchup changes. Uh, they're pretty good about uh, putting some of that information together from the beat writers, a little coach speak comes out. Not always that much because they're trying to, you know, keep the other team off guard. But some of that usually gets out and we'll be able to incorporate that in our Discord with our members. From the Atlanta side, you know, it begins and ends certainly with Trey Young. He's 9-3. And again, you know, we know he's playoff clutch. We know that he can step up and get it done. Certainly not the greatest matchup for him by any stretch with Miami, but he needs to be considered. Um, not as strong of a play as I felt the last go when I didn't know if Bogdanovich was going to go. Now that I have Bogdanovich in, he is a volume shooter as well, and that does take some shots away from Trey. And, you know, the rotation now is, is thin at the bigs, but their guard rotation is still solid with, with Trey and Herter and Hunter and Bogdanovich, maybe a little bit of right in there, or they may give a two or three minutes to TLC. But more than likely, it'll be young Herter, Hunter, and Bogdanovich getting most of those minutes at the one, two spots. So, you know, those guys can all be considered. The, the good thing is you still have cheap prices on Bogdanovich at 5-3, Herter at 4-5, and Hunter at 4-4. Four, four all capable of getting there, uh, you know, plus 10, you know, the F5X plus 10. So all uh, definitely a possibility. John Collins being back certainly changes things with Gallinari a little bit. Uh, there's going to be some splits, some less rebounds. And then Okongwu is at 5K flat. He became a big part of everything that's going on for Atlanta with Capella out. So really the three bigs, Collins, uh, Okongu, and Gallinari all can be considered here. I do like the 5K price uh, on Okongu. I think that he's a nice play. And Collins, man, at 5-1 is dirt cheap. Uh, I know he's not playing 100% healthy, but that is a low price uh, for, for Mr. Collins. So that's probably going to be a pretty popular play for people as well. All right, that game under our belt. Let's get to this second game, which is the game that everybody will be uh, loading up on without question. It's Minnesota at Memphis. We know Memphis dropped that first game, so it's a desperation win game for Memphis at home. You cannot go down 0-2 on the road. Speaking of not going down 0-2 on the road, I have to pay a little homage to the Mavericks. Gutsy win last night. 
incredibly great performance by Brunson. He helped us cash in all our DraftKings lineups and uh, was uh, really fantastic. I know Dirk really appreciates it and uh, just had to give them a shout out because that was a monster win. And now hopefully we get Luca back for game three. Uh, then we then we're on game on at that point. All right. Minnesota, Memphis. Memphis is favored by seven. So you got that's the other thing. There's no super tight spreads here, which always brings that will one of these games blow out and screw up the whole slate. Because Miami's favored by seven, Memphis is favored by seven, even though they lost that first game, and Phoenix is favored by nine and a half in the last game. So a lot to you know figure out here, even though it's only three games. Um, the total again, 240 and a half. And you know, we've had a magic number that's worked for us all season when both teams have an excess of a 115 implied total. That has been the games that we have been, you know, 2v2, 2-3, you know, having a real heavy dose of players from those games. And it generally pays off the majority of the time. And that's what we have right here. Minnesota with a very solid 116.75 implied. And how about 123.75 implied for Memphis? So it's no joke here. The possessions, the attempts. Uh, at DFS points from all angles are going to be super high. Um, Injury-wise, Torian Prince is questionable. If he gets in, could get sneak a few minutes on the wing play. Uh, then we have Santi Aldama is uh, questionable. Not sure he'd get in there. Killin Killian Tilly is out. So both teams basically full strength here uh, on top of everything else. Game set wise, the reason why you've got a 240 and a half total in a playoff game, which doesn't usually exceed that 240 number because teams shorten their rotation, they play tougher D. And but in this situation, you've got during the season, Minnesota, the fastest paced team in the league, and Memphis, the third fastest team. So, you know, they're going to be flying up and down the floor. Defensively, Minnesota, very respectable 13th. And Memphis, an outstanding fourth, which uh, was number one, uh, actually real close between them and Boston for the second half of the season uh, in defensive rating. So, you know, you do have some defense here. It certainly doesn't outweigh the pace and the offensive prowess, but it is something, you know, to consider. As far as value in this game, you know, Patrick Beverly at 5'6", Jared Vanderbilt at 3'9". Those are some low price guys you can consider, in my opinion. And then on the other side of the ball, Stephen Adams at 5'2", still a super cheap price. I mean, when you're looking at Okongu at 5K and Adams at 5'2", you know, there's that price range. It's a lot of pivoting can go back and forth here. Brandon Clark played well off the bench, if you think he can follow that up at 4-4. And then you've got your big-time players. This is where the decisions will have to be made. You have D'Angelo Russell at 7-1, which is a very fair price. You have Desmond Bain at 6-4, and we know that he can really go off. Uh, Dylan Brooks right below him at 6-2. And right above them is Jaron Jackson at 6-5. So, You've got all those guys in the mid sixes, which are very fair in a game like this. Uh, the two payups of which I'm trying to decide between the two right now, Anthony Edwards is, is a little expensive at 8-2, but he looks pretty locked in. And then Carl Anthony Towns at 9-5, playing extremely intense basketball, really raising the level of his game. Um, the question is, do you pay up to that 9-5 number? Um, certainly very playable without question. So there's a good four, I would say, players on each side that you can go to. Um, I'm going to want to have some salary for this last game as well. Plus, I'm still trying to make room for Trey Young. So more than likely, not going to go pay up for all these guys. Going to try to find a really solid pay up on each side, leaning towards a possibility of a Ja Morant and a D'Angelo Russell, and then try to find two mid-level price guys like a Patrick Beverly and either Desmond Bain or Dylan Brooks or Steven Adams. So 
a lot of options there. Like I said, it's not going to be dead chalk. You got to have this guy. Um, but I think just finding that right combination is, is really going to be the key. So we'll be all over that game. I'm thinking probably going to go 3-2, have five guys from this ball game, And I think it's necessary. And if, if you're afraid it's not contrarian enough, trust me, there's enough combinations of guys. Uh, people aren't just going to be loading in. This isn't like Lucas and Embiid's and Jokers. This you, There's decisions to be made all over the board here. All right, before we get to the third game, real quickly, if you're watching on YouTube, this is a big ask. This is the only thing we ask. We do this in front of the paywall seven days a week. Hit that thumbs up for us. That'd really be important. Uh, hey, it's my birthday. I'm allowed to ask for a thumbs up. So if you ever were going to do a thumbs up, you know, throw a guy a bone. I am turning uh, 35 today. Uh, oops, sorry. The nose was growing. I'm, I'm actually 40. We'll go with 40. I'll be comfortable with that. But that may or may not be accurate. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, <clears throat> I give us that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, hit that little alarm in the upper corner. This way, every time one of our podcast posts, you, you're getting an alert, and we're putting them out all the time. We've got uh, DFS and, and Prize Picks podcasts for the NBA, for PGA, and MLB. And those MLB and NBA are every day. So quick thumbs up. Hit that uh, subscribe button. That means a lot to us. And then also, um, if you're listening audio-wise through any of our landing spots, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, you name it, a quick five-star rating, a little comment. Uh, what we do is our man Colin will go through that at the end of each month. We'll do a random draw for one uh, full one-week membership, uh, all access to DFS Coach Talk. So we would appreciate that as well. All right, we're getting to this final game. It's the New Orleans Pelicans and Phoenix Suns. It's a 10 o'clock game. So we've got the 7.30 Atlanta-Miami game. Then we have Minnesota-Memphis, which will start. We'll uh, get to sort of in the second half of the Atlanta-Miami game. So you'll be going back and forth for those two. And then the, the um, Minnesota-Memphis game should end right as the New Orleans-Phoenix games gets going at 10. Um, in this game, Phoenix is a nine and a half point favorite, 221 and a half total, 106 implied for the Pels, and 115 and a half for the Phoenix Suns. In this game, injury wise, Zion is out. So, you know, they teased us with him possibly getting into a game, but it ain't happening. So, we're not going to even mess with Mr. Cheeseburgers. Dario Saric has not played, but I have mentioned him being out for like 300 consecutive days. Hope he's getting better. All right, here we go on this game. Where do we go? Where do you count? Chris Paul was ludicrous the last game. He looked so damn good. They had no answer to stop him. It's hard to not want to go back to him. It's one of those situations where you're not chasing points. It's just they don't have a defensive player that can stop him and I think you know the way he handles it this could be one of those games where if he scores a little less he's going to have 15 16 assists kind of situation so he's a target for me I really think at 8-3 I think he's very fair I know it's a higher price than he's been but I think he deserves it I think this is you know, he sees this I think as his by far best chance to win an NBA championship that is the one thing he's missed. And if he doesn't get it here, you never, there's no guarantees you're going to be back. And I think he knows this is it. I mean, he's all in. I know he hasn't gotten it done in playoffs in past years. He looks so motivated. You talk about a focused eye on the prize here. Um, I'm going to be taking a lot of Chris Paul through this entire playoffs. He's the one guy that I've seen more focused than any other player thus far in the playoffs. I think he's he's a guy that you can take two out of three days, and I think today is one of them because they want they need to go up 2-0 here. They don't want to have any stress going into New Orleans for the next set of games. I think he comes out with that same intensity, that same vigor that he showed uh, in game one. So 
high on my list there. Makes it tougher to, to grab Booker in that situation. Certainly a guy that can go off for 50 real points at any time, but I'm going to lean towards Paul here. Mikhail Bridges, uh, now, the, you know, he's in that five, he was in the final three for defensive player of the year. He's getting a lot of minutes, a lot of attention. He's only 5K and he gets, gets some shots up. I think he's a very, very reasonable play. Jay Crowder, uh, 4, 4.4K, just stung a lot of people, not looking quite fully intact here. Probably going to fade that from that direction. Same thing with Aiton. I, I don't know. It's 7-2. It just always seems like his ceiling isn't high enough for that price. In the sixes, yeah, you know, you could force him in. It's 7-2. There's a lot of pivots I think I would rather go to. Plus, they're going to depend on, you know, McGee for some decent minutes. And, uh, you know, he's just not the focal point of that offense, period. And, you know, with, with the two bigs inside and Hayes and Valachunas, they lay some bodies on him, so it's not as easy to get him that lob as he usually gets. So, really, it's 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 Paul and Bridges I'm focusing on right now as the key go-tos with Phoenix. On the Pell side, you know, you've got that dilemma again. You've got three guys priced pretty high in McCollum at 8-1, Ingram at 7-9, and Joval at 7-5. Uh, all three playable, of course. They can all get there, but it's the Phoenix defense in Phoenix. And, you know, in this, in this matchup, you've got the Pell's the 21st pace and Phoenix ninth. But defensively, the Pell's are only 20th and Phoenix is third. And they've been consistent in that top three all year. Um, so it just it makes it tough to want to pay up uh, for the Pels guys. Certainly, you know, you can choose one of them. I think it's very reasonable to, to go with a McCollum, Ingram, or Joe Val. But I don't see how you go with more than one against this stout Phoenix defense. For me, of those three at this moment, um, I'm actually leaning towards Brandon Ingram at, at 7'9". Still a little higher than I'd like to play, pay, but you know his price was depressed down uh, when he missed some of those games. Now it's getting back up there again, but I th still think for his potential, uh, it's a little low. Don't know if I'm going to go with any of the three, though, but he'd be the one I'd lean towards. If you do want uh, some real value here and, and it's last guy in to make things work, I think you have three options here that make sense. Herb Jones is only 4-3. Jackson Hayes is only 3-5. And Larry Nance is only 4-4. Four, four. All three of those guys should get solid minutes and uh, be competitive. And then if you want to take one little bit more risk, then you have Jose Alvarado, who's been very steady this last month. And you know he's going to grab you a few steals. And uh, and play hard, and he's only three nine. So to grab a, a cheap Pell or two here uh, really is doable, and I think can help round things out for you. So that is it, my friends. That's the full scoop on tonight's uh, slate. I really like it. I think this is going to be a four crown plus slate for me for our members. If you want to check us out, uh, come on over dfscoachtalk.com. Sign up with, uh, you don't have to use any promo code, just sign up. You can come in for uh, as little as three days for 10 bucks. Want to try us a week for 25. We have a five day for 19. So we really have it built for whatever you're looking for. And we would love to welcome you into our Discord. As soon as you sign up through our website, you will be placed right directly in our main chat. That's where all of our lineups are posted, all of our core plays and all of the information throughout the day. So that is that. Big shout out again to Prize Picks. Uh, and in, in fact, in Prize Picks, we're going to do our Prize Picks plays right now. What I wanted to do is wait and re-click on it because in the morning like this, they're constantly adding and changing uh, folks uh, on their on their uh, website. So I'm on prizepicks.com right now. There are a couple of things that I really, really like. My first play is going to be, uh, this is actually my second best play of the day, but I will go over this one first. And it is DeAndre Ayton under 18 and a half points.
points. So that's going to be my second favorite choice. And let me see if my other one points, rebounds, assist guy, see if that has maintained. Um, where is he? They always shuffle them around. There it is. Chris Paul, 32 and a half points, rebounds, assists. Feel great about that. This just smells like a 17 point, 15 assist kind of game uh, with a few, some rebounds and steals in there. But PRA, Chris Paul, over 32 and a half is my top play, prize picks play of the day. I will have another three plays that I will release in our Discord for our members later this afternoon. All right, my friends, could not enjoy spending a birthday with more uh, and closer family here than our, our DFS Coach Talk listeners. Thank you so much for taking this time uh, with me today. And uh, let's use that birthday narrative and take down a little bit of everything. We're going to be providing for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. So let's get the brooms out. Let's get after it. Go Mavs uh, again tomorrow, but, you know, still celebrating from last night. And uh, have a fantastic day, everybody. Really appreciate everybody listening in. Have a great one. We'll be back again tomorrow when we look to crush it in NBA, DFS, and prize picks.